This video is sponsored by Wallpen. As homeowners, many of us are looking for ways to display our pictures, our images, our different graphics on our blank walls. We're trying to find ways that we can actually mount these different pictures, and so I've done several videos on this. I've talked about different picture hanger types with drywall anchors and nails and tips and tricks for this. I've even done videos reviewing, even on this exact wall right here, the 3M claw to see if that was a good option. So with all of that, I keep getting these comments that are pretty similar. People are asking, what if I wanna do a really big picture. What if I wanna do something huge? What are my options for that? Now, when I say large images, I'm talking really large images that are way fun to have on your walls, like the hanging pictures that are this big or ones that are even larger. With wallpaper, you've got a few setbacks which are, you're gonna have some gaps or some seams depending on the install. The resolution typically isn't gonna be 300 DPI and look really crisp. It's a little bit soft, a little fuzzy basically. And then a lot of people have real struggles with trying to actually put this up on the wall. That's because the install is not quite so easy. Also, textured walls. If you've got some texture on your walls that's greater than what you see here, then a lot of times that's gonna be an issue because the wallpaper is trying to hug those curves and it's pretty difficult. Then if you change your mind later, the removal a lot of times is kind of destructive to the walls depending on how long it's been there, how well it was applied, and the type of material you got. A second option with that is vinyl. A lot of people will turn to vinyl for a solution like this, and vinyl can be wider rolls, and you can do really large graphics, but with that, you have a lot of the same issues. The removal could be an issue, and then you've also got the issues of resolution. If you've ever walked up to a vinyl printed wall or a banner or something like that, especially if it's in your house and you're seeing it up close, then you realize that's not so crisp, that's maybe not so sharp. So the graphics on that are often lower resolution. All of those methods also have the issue of dealing with a couple of things. Number one, if you wanna get a little creative with your install, if you wanna do, for example, some drop shadows on there, if you wanna do some small and intricate pieces, then vinyl and wallpaper are just not a good way to go. If you've ever been to a museum, for example, where they put up vinyl lettering and you see kids are peeling at it or they're just starting to fall off due to humidity or different things like that, that can be a total issue. So there are some setbacks, but there are a lot of strengths with those too, but they're not always the best solution. So I wanna tell you the true story of what happened with me and a couple of my buddies, my business partners. We decided we wanted to find a solution for this and we wanted to take large walls like this and have the option to print something huge on them. Notice I said print. So we were looking for technology that we had heard about where you could actually print right on the walls. And as we were searching online, we found what was called a vertical wall printer. This is a machine that gives you the option to overcome all of those things that we just talked about. You print directly on the wall and there could be some pretty significant level of texture or depth essentially going on and it will still be able to handle that as well. You can do it at high resolution, you can do it full color, there's all these pretty cool things about it. And we're looking at this thinking, let's see if we can get this thing to work. And if we can, maybe we can start a little business doing this for other people in their homes and especially for businesses. Businesses I think would really benefit from something like this. So we found a machine on Alibaba. We ordered it and had it shipped to us. That's when the fun began and we were like, okay, I think we actually have a solution here, but there are multiple big catches to what happened after that. Okay, a quick time out here. I'm about to show you all of the things that went wrong with our first attempt at doing wall printing and trying to get this technology to work the way we needed it to. But I will show you that in the end, we ended up with a machine called a wall pen, which is made in Germany and really was the answer to everything we needed. And we ended up getting prints like this and like this and like this. This thing is pretty incredible, but we didn't start there. We started with a machine that gave us a lot of troubles. So take a look at what we had to go through before we got to those results. The machine itself was basically like a giant inkjet printer. It has UV curable ink and it has a UV light on it that cures as it prints, which is pretty cool. And it's on basically a mast and the mast will allow the printer head to move up and down while it moves along on a track on the floor. And it's essentially moving one swath at a time, printing this image right onto your wall, as you can see here. So it's a pretty exciting way to do things and we were pretty stoked about it. But before we actually got to use it, we started to encounter our first issue. When we unboxed everything, we realized this was not a ready to go printer at all. This was a DIY project to say the least. So we actually had to spend several days trying to put this thing together. And then once we got it put together, we had to spend several more days trying to figure out how to use it and how to get all the tracks lined up, all of the aluminum bars lined up, 
all of the floor track lined up, everything about it was an issue, basically. We, we just couldn't figure out how to get these things to run smoothly, and it just took so much time to try to get it there. When we were ready to finally plug it in, the plug didn't fit into the printer itself. This was clearly not made for the US market, and we had to message on WhatsApp, we messaged Master Meng. That was his actual name and title of, of who we did our tech support with. So we said, Master Meng, this plug doesn't fit. And he said, use knife shave plug. That was his response. So he said basically take a razor, shave it down, and, and get it to fit. We knew that that was like red flag number nine at that point, but we again persevered. So we got it to start printing, and we noticed right away we were having some issues with colors. The colors just never seemed to be true to what was on the screen or other prints that we had seen, and it was pretty problematic. Not only that, but we started seeing a lot of banding. We were seeing these stripes. The stripes would be vertical, sometimes we'd see horizontal stripes, and that was pretty disappointing as you can imagine. Now all of that is to say nothing of the technology we encountered on the machine. It was literally running a bootleg copy of Windows 98. It had a little screen on there that we were excited to be able to interact with, but it was not touch screen, so you had to plug in your own mouse and keyboard, but there's no place to put your mouse or keyboard, so I had to design and 3D print my own little stands, these little mounts, for the keyboard and mouse so that we could try to figure some of that out and get that working. Then as a result of being Windows 98 bound, we just had the crappiest software that we had to deal with. And then everything that we wanted to do on that was limited by the fact that the software was so old, the hardware was old. Bear in mind, there's three of us that were working on this and we're trying to figure out how to do this. So we're taking turns printing at each other's houses. And that's when we realized another issue was that this thing was massive. It used a garage door style, garage door opener style belt to make the machine print head move up and down on this aluminum mast. And it seemed to work okay some of the time, but then it would slip and cause issues. And then if you wanted to adjust the height, because maybe you have a seven and a half foot ceiling or a 10 foot ceiling, that caused all kinds of other issues and you had to adjust that belt every single time. So issues galore. When we were taking it from one house to another house, for example, we had to buy a dolly that we could use and we'd strap it down with tie down straps for our trucks. And then we would roll it over we dipped the thing way back to try to get it to fit through the door because it was so tall and disassembling it wasn't worth the two and a half hours it would take to do so. So we would just try to get that thing rolled through the door, down into a basement like this, down into the other guy's basement. It was kind of a nightmare. I think you get the picture at this point that this thing was not going to work. The main thing about it, we could kind of overlook all of the other issues that it had, but the really it came down to the fact that we couldn't get good quality prints out of it and we thought, we could maybe get away with this for our own homes, but we could definitely not charge somebody for the types of quality we were seeing coming out of this thing. It just never looked right as far as color, as far as resolution, and as far as consistency of print. It was patchy, it was banded, it just never worked out. So, this went on for months, and finally we said, we've got to start looking at another option here. So along the way, we had been hearing about this German company that made a printing machine called the Wall Pen. And we, we knew that was an option, but we thought we could make ours work, we'll get it to work. Eventually we did cave and we put in our order for the German machine. And again, this thing is actually designed, engineered, and manufactured in Germany, so we had it shipped directly from there. And with that, supposedly we would have the option then to print on just about any surface. This thing could print on glass, metal, drywall like this, it could do substrates, it could do, you name it, basically. We had any options that were vertical and relatively flat we could do. They could have some texture and some movement within them, but it just really could handle all kinds of stuff. And we were excited to experiment with that too and find out how far we could push that thing to its limits. So we knew that we were hopefully getting a much better machine, but we did not expect how much of a night and day difference this thing was from the original machine that we purchased on Alibaba. When it arrived, we unpacked it and we set the machine up for the first time in less than 30 minutes. And that's only took that long because we were stubborn and we're guys and we're like, we don't need the manual. We get it, we see it, we can figure it out. Had we used the manual, it would have gone faster. Now I wanna show you right here, this is my friend Doug and he's setting up the machine and it takes about five minutes to do. It's pretty crazy, it's super portable. In fact, it comes in a set of bags here that are custom manufactured for the wall pen and they all have shoulder straps and handles so much so that this thing breaks down to a tidy package that you can fit in just about any compact car, whether it's a Prius or a Civic or a Corolla or anything like that. Obviously you can put it in the back of a truck as well, but you don't need that. You can actually just use a regular car to transport this thing around, which is pretty awesome.
Just a few days before getting the wall pen, we had tried printing this logo for a local company called Fat Cats on our wall. We were trying to get their business and we just, again, didn't feel right approaching them with the technology that we had with the Chinese machine. And so we had this as our before with the overseas machine from China. And then we printed, our first print was with the wall pen of this Fat Cats logo and we ended up with this. No bands, no lines, pure solid colors, everything looked perfect. And this was a pretty easy print overall because it's just some pretty solid colors and some basic shapes, nothing too complicated. But even on something this simple, it looked way better, night and day difference from what we saw with the previous machine. One other thing we loved about this machine is that we weren't just getting a machine, we were kind of getting a business. So it comes with two days of training. You can either go to one of the US facilities for training on site, or you can opt to have them come to your place and do the training there. Either way, you're not just gonna be learning about the technical aspects of the machine and how to run it and how to make sure it's running smoothly and maintain it, but you can also learn about sales and marketing and branding and all the things that you need to actually have your own business. This is something that was super appealing to us because we wanted to be able to do more with this machine than just print in our own homes, in our basements and that kind of stuff. Remember that big hanging picture, in fact, that we showed earlier in the video? Well, here it is, but the fact is, there's nothing hanging here. This is just a 2D print that we did. You can see the time lapse here. And this can print this sort of thing with the drop shadows right on it. It can do crazy resolution. This thing we only printed at 300 DPI, but you can go quite a bit higher if you feel a need for that. And it's completely flat. There's no risk of things falling, no injuries, no issues, no mounting anything to the wall. This is just super high res printed right on the wall. It is legitimately amazing what you can do when you have this kind of technology at your fingertips. There really are no limits on this. Since last year, we've run a successful business using the wall pen to print murals and art and graphics on the walls of businesses and homeowners all over the state of Utah. Customers love it because we can do cool things like adding three-dimensional shadows to make it look like the image is popping off the wall. We can do feathered edges to make the image blend into the wall. And we've printed at software companies and shipping facilities, medical offices, gyms, garages, homes, Airbnbs, you name it, we've printed it. We've been so impressed with the tech, in fact, that we've started a separate channel on YouTube called Will It Print, where we're actually showing people all the different cool things that you can print. And we're getting super experimental. We're doing surfboards and we're doing desktops and sneakers and window blinds, you name it. If we can get it vertical, we're gonna try to print on it and see how it goes. I'll put a link to that channel in the description and you can check it out at the end of the video as well. One of the big game changers for us with this is both the printer itself as well as the tracks that it rides on, which are optional by the way. They just help if the floor is not completely level or stable. These can be leveled and stabilized, but they're all precision machined and everything just fits together perfectly. We had so many issues lining things up with these kind of aftermarket machines that we tried before. With this one, everything pops into place like a Lego and then you tighten it all up and then you're done. You don't need to worry about skips or jumps or bumps or anything like that. Everything just fits together exactly how it should and you just don't have to worry about it. The machine comes with built-in distance sensors on the head so it will stay just the right amount away from the wall to get a perfect print every time, even if there's a little bit of a slope going on, which is pretty common. It can also print white. This is a huge game changer in this industry. This will print white ink out before the rest of it. So I'm actually printing white on this wall right now and this allows us to be able to do darker walls. I can print this on black walls, gray walls, white walls, or any other color, and it doesn't matter because it can handle it because of the white addition. It's pretty rad. Not only that, but because of the UV lamps that are at the top and bottom of the print head, it cures everything real time. So you can have a little kid go up and touch the wall right after it's been printed, no issues. You don't have to wait for it to cure or set or anything like that. It's done right away, which is really nice. I think you'll agree with me that this is a pretty cool option, especially when you're looking at wallpaper or vinyl and you wanna do something huge and impressive but without limitations, this thing is pretty rad. So the wall pen printed this in about three and a half hours and we just kinda of get to sit here and babysit and make sure everything looks good and it did, that was easy peasy. And this basically opens up all kinds of doors and opportunities for your homes as well as for business. Speaking of which, if you're interested in getting a print like this, we'll put links down in the description below where you can find out more. We've got a frequently asked questions where you can learn all about what this can and can't do. Just like any technology, it can't do anything and everything. There are some limitations, but basically any vertical surface that you have in mind, it can handle it. 
If you're also interested in running a business with this like we have been, then I'll put links in the description for that too so you can check that out, learn a little bit more about what's involved and not just how to have the machine, but how to have a business around the machine. That's one of the things we teach and we think that's critical that you understand the marketing and the sales and the imagery and everything that you need, the graphic side of things, so that you can run a business either as a side gig or as your main hustle. If you wanna learn a little bit more about some of the picture hanging videos I've done, you can check those out right over here. I'm Nils with Learn to DIY. Thanks for watching.